فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد We are in the explanation of the kitab, Kitab al-Waraqat, written by Al-Imam Abi Ma'ali al-Juwayni rahimahullahu ta'ala. We stopped uh, when the author rahimahullah, he speaks about the uh, al-istithna, exception. Then the author rahimahullah went on to say, يجوز تقديم الاستثناء على المستثنى منه. That it is permissible to place the istithna before the thing that the istithna is being done to. So in other words, the exception can go before the thing that the exception is being done on, if that makes sense. Because there is no effect that it has. So if the person puts illa before the actual mustathna minhu, then it doesn't, if the order is basically made back to front, there is no issue here. It can be done. It doesn't affect the ruling basically. Whether the istithna is after or whether the istithna is before it, the author is trying to say to you that there is no harm and there is no problem in that regard. Okay? Then he goes on to say, Also, he says that it is permissible that Afradul Am Afradul Amil fil istithna or min ghayrihi. If the person takes an exception out of the thing that are the same in its essence. So for example, if I say, A people came, uh, except what? Illa Zayd, except Zayd. Zayd is the only one who didn't come. Now Zayd is a jinns from Qawm. Are you with me? But can I say, Illa Farasan, a horse? A horse is not the jinns of the Qawm. It's not the essence of the qawm. So the author is saying, It's permissible to do both. There's no problem with that. That's what the author is going towards. But the correct opinion is, The correct opinion is that, no, it's not right. You can't. That it has to be, it has to be from his jinns. And some of the ulama have actually made it, instead of two conditions, they made it three conditions. I only mentioned two conditions, remember. Are you there, brothers? Are you there? Some of the scholars, they said, So remember, we said that there's something has to remain from it. We mentioned that previously. And the second condition that we gave was what? Remember, we said that. Some scholars, they added this into the third condition. But we say that, that this condition is incorrect. Which is what? Uh, sorry. It's not correct. And Sheikh Muhammad Al-Amin Al-Shanqiti, Rahimahullah, he goes into that a bit more and expands on that more. Now we finished what pertains to Al-Istithna. We finished what pertains to Al-Istithna. The author then goes on to speaking about, the author goes on to speaking about Al-Shartu, which is Takhsisu Al-Sharti. And he goes on to saying, وَالشَّرْطُ يَجُوزُ أَنْ يَتَأَخَرَ عَنِ الْمَشْرُوطِ That it is permissible this is the second type, pay attention. This is what? It's the second type. The first type was what? How many types did we say that was, was the Al-Mukhassasat Al-Mutasila? We said three were, were from the Al-Mukhassasat Al-Mutasila. Brothers, don't just sit there. It's important that you guys understand this. Al-Mukhassasat Al-Mutasila, how many? Three that the author mentioned. The first one was what? Al-Istithna. Did we finish that? No. Naam. We're now moving on to Al-Shart. And then after that is what? Al-Sifa. So we're now going to speak about al sharto the author goes into the second type of al mukhassisat al mutasila from the mukhassisat al mutasila he says was sharat yajuz an yata'akhkhara 'an al mashruti the shart can go or delayed after the mashrut after the thing that has been conditioned and the shart that the author here is talking about 
is the what is known as a shart al-lughawi, the lexical shart. He's not talking about the technical shart. And as I said before, the author did not define what shart means. He did not define it. That's the second type. The third type, which is as-sifa. As-sifa, which is from the al-mukhassisat al-muttasila. The author goes on to say, ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ ثُمَّ ذَكَرَ uh, Then he mentions what? وَالْمُقَيِّدُ بِالصِّفَةِ يُحْمَلُ عَلَيْهِ الْمُطْلَقُ كَالْرَقَبَةِ قُيِّدَتْ بِالْإِيمَانِ فِي بَعْضِ الْمَوَاضِعِ The author said, وَالْمُقَيَّدِ بِالصِّفَةِ وَالْمُقَيَّدُ بِالصِّفَةِ يُحْمَلُ عَلَيْهِ الْمُطْلَقُ the sifa, the characteristics, is restricted. Are you with me? Sometimes something is a particular characteristics is what's been made to restrict it. Like, for example, when Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala he says and the author mentions that karraqabati quyidat bil imani fa tahriru raqabati mu'mina free the neck of a believing woman the believing woman and the believing woman is a characteristic is an attribute the freeing of the neck has been restricted to this characteristic specifically the author here if you look at what he says he uses the word mutlaq are you with me and the intent that he means by the word mutlaq here is that he means am. He's using it as the usage of the word am. Because what you need to know is the qudama al usuliyin the early generation of the usuliyin there were some of them who used to see the am as mutlaq. And the mutlaq as am. They used to use it both sin- s- and uh, uh, they used to, huh? Synonymous. Synonymously. They would use it both synonymously. Hada min babi ish? Because it's just let it go through. The reason is because because there was a meaning in which they both share. And the meaning that they both share is that they both encompass the wording. But the way that they encompass the wording is different. The istighraq of the lafz, the, the istighraq, meaning them encompassing this word, is different for the two of them. Pay attention to this. The am, the way that it encompasses the wording and it generalizes itself is different from the way that the mutlaq generalizes itself or it uh, encompasses the wording. Okay? The mutlaq, the way it encompasses itself or it generalizes itself in the wording is from the angle of ala wajhil badal, the mutlaq. Ala wajhil badal. Whereas the Am, and this is the underlining factor between the two of them. This is the farq between al-am and mutlaq. Is that the mutlaq is huwa al-lafudu al-mawdu'u l-istighraq jami'i afradi ala wajhi al-badal. That the mutlaq's definition is that it is a word. It was placed to encompass the usage of this particular word, its meaning. But in what form? Ala wajhi al-badal. I'll explain to you what badal means, inshallah. Ala wajhi al-badal. That's what mutlaq means. Memorize the word al-badal and I'll explain it for you, inshallah. Whereas the same definition is for am, which is what? Huwa lafdul mawdu' It's a word that was placed, okay? And it was coined for what? Listighraqi jami'i afradi ala wajhi shumul. Ala wajhi shumul. And as for am, the way it encompasses its word or the way it generalizes itself is in a form known as ash-shumul. Ash-shumul, ala wajh ash-shumul. And what does that mean? We're, gonna, we're going to be seeing that soon. For example, when Allah said in the Quran, إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُصْر Is this am or is it mutlaq? Allah says in this verse, Verily mankind, verily mankind is upon misguidance or in loss. Verily man is in a state of loss, right? This is am. This is am, it is not mutlaq. The reason is because it encompasses the meaning al-insan in its totality. And it encompasses it from an angle that it, it sticks with it. So this, it means every single human being on the face of this earth today is in a state of loss 
except those who Allah took them out of it. which is istithna we mentioned. this is called istithna mutasil by the way. It's connected to the sentence. If I ask you which is which type of istithna mutasil is this, is what? Sifa. Characteristics have been asked from you. So those who come with these characteristics are the ones who are out of this khasara. They are not in state of loss. Now, come to the mutlaq. The mutlaq, in the other word, Allah says, فَالتَّحْرِيرُ رَقَبَةِ مؤمنة. Free the neck of a believing woman. Now, does it show that this is specific to all of necks or is it for all believing women? The scholars, they say, this is where it comes into the concept of ala wajhi al-badal. It shows all necks, even if they're not believers, when the alternative, the badal comes from this, that the freeing neck of a believer is not found. They has to free a neck. So it, it, does, it does generalize the other wordings, but not ala wajhi shumul It does it ala wajhi al-badal, when there is no alternative except to have to free them. The hukum doesn't become mu'attal. The hukum doesn't become dismantled. So you would have to free the neck of a woman, even if she's not a believer, because it is hukum is just mutlaq. So it encompasses it ala wajhi al-badal. So if you can't find a neck of a, a believing woman, you go to a neck of a slave, regardless of whether she's a believing woman. The reason is because this is a mutlaq term that was used, and it is used, and it encompasses ala wajhi al-badal. Badal meaning I have to now take an alternative. Whereas the am doesn't require alternative. Its situation is always upon the usage of that word. That's the most common the cho choice of the muhaqqiqin. There are many other angles they look at it. But I think this one is the one that i'tirad is very little regarding. Meaning there's no criticism that was put towards that analyzation or that observation. Pay attention to that. But there are other definitions and other meanings that I've previously given. Then the author, rahimahullah, talks about another point, which is hamlul mutlaq ala al muqayyad. Now, hamlul mutlaq ala al muqayyad means what? A general term comes, an unrestricted term, an unrestricted wording comes in the Quran. Then comes a restricted. Which one takes precedence? You see, this is important. Which is that. <coughs> Pay attention. Hamlul mutlaqi ala al muqayyadi. Hamlul mutlaqi ala al muqayyad. The author talks about this, and this is very important to understand. But when we look at the issue of hamlul mutlaqi ala al muqayyad, we have to remember a concept which we previously once spoke about, which is the issue of al hukum wa sababu. Remember, we spoke about this. Naam. The ruling and the reasoning have to both be the same. So we say بشرط أن يأتلف It has to come together الحكم والسبب اتحادا It has to be together or they have to go against one another. And this is something it has to be clarified in different places. Some people mean due to their ignorance and their lack of understanding of usul al-fiqh they will say to you for instance they'll say to you that the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam he said ما أسفل من الكعبين ففي النار. Anything that's below the ankles is in the hellfire. Pay attention to this. The Prophet said in this hadith, any individual whose garment or his clothing is below his ankles is in the hellfire. Okay. And then the Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, من جر ثوبه خيالا. Anyone who drags his garment out of arrogance, لم ينظر الله إليه لم ينظر الله تعالى إليه يوم القيامة. Allah does not look at that individual the day of judgment. So what they said was that the first narration which spoke unrestrictedly is restricted with the other narration, because this narration they said that the prophet didn't say arrogance, but this other narration restricts it. It says arrogance, so we have to give precedence to the restricted narration over the unrestricted narration. So because of that. The only thing that's looked at is if you wear your garment out of arrogance. We say this is not correct. Hamlul mutlaq ala al muqayyad. You didn't understand it properly then. The reason is because both of these hadith have different reasons and they have different hukum. The reasoning is different and the hukum is different. And the condition was ayat tahida 
السبب والحكم الحكم والسبب the حكم and the سبب have to both come together how are they different the first narration is talking about a person whose garment is below his ankles for whatever reason it is so the reason here it, it, it's not it's not it's not given any and the ruling here is different which is that Allah is going to take him that legs of his and whatever is below the ankles Allah is going to take it to the hellfire that part of his foot is going to be in the hellfire that's what that narration mentions that's the ruling for the one who does it unrestrictedly whatever reason it may be it doesn't matter this narration on the hand it said that arrogance has a different ruling though if it's done out of arrogance Allah won't look at him not that Allah will punish his legs or Allah won't look at him so the rulings are too different the reasons reasons are too different إذن حبل المطلق على المقيد cannot be taken cannot taken place over here okay so don't speak about matters and these these issues require it requires more clarification more explanation and we've done that before there was a little research we done on it and we put it out uh, we put it out or we I went through with you guys now the author rahimahullah goes into the uh, uh, the our second type we've just finished now al mukhassisat al muttasila al mukhassisat al muttasila was was what the connective specification right we finished that now we're now going to move on to and what's the definition hey hey oh what was the definition of al mukhassisat al muttasila what did we say was the definition the specification exception or the specified exception what definition did we give that one I audience you. When we divided the mukhassisat, we divided it into two. Technically, anywhere that is placed to encompass all its type of energy. La, Any other? Hey? Hey? It cannot stand independently. It can't stand independently. And what did we say the mukhassisat al mufassila was what? It can't stand, it can't stand independently. That's what we said. We're now over and done with the first one, which is al mukhassisat al mutasila. We're over and done with, right? We're now swiftly moving on to al mukhassisat al munfasila. Al mukhassisat al munfasila, the detached, disconnected specifiers. Okay. The author goes on to say, "Wajuz taqsisu al kitab bil kitab wa taqsisu al kitab bil sunnah," and then he mentions what he mentions after that. Rahimahullah Taala. <laughs> These which the author mentions are the most f- common, the most well-known types of mukhassisat and mufassila. The most common forms of detached, disconnected specifiers. And if you look at the mukhassisat generally, brothers, the qa'idah, the principle is that the mukhassisat, the qa'idah, the principle is that the uh, the uh, detached and disconnected specifiers, they are brought to three things. They are brought back to three things. The first one is brought back to is ash-shar'u, the legislation, the sharia. And the second one is, it's brought back to al-hissu. Sah? Al-hissu meaning the empirical or the tangible, huh? Al-hissu. The third one which is Al-Aqlu Your intellect, rationality and whatnot. The author from those three Which one did he speak about only? Al-Shar'u Because we're dealing with The first one, the most important one Which is Al-Shar'u In the Sharia The Mukhassasat Al-Munfassila That are connected to the Sharia Are three types The first one is Al-Kitab Three things are connected to المخصصات المنفصلة The detached, disconnected specifiers The first one is الكتاب And the kitab here is the Quran, right? صح? So the Quran is what? The author said the Quran والمخصص به هو الكتاب والسنة. That's what the author says. ويجوز تخصيص الكتاب بالكتاب. Are you with me? The second one is السنة. The Sunnah is a 
والمخصص به هو الكتاب والسنة. The second one is السنة. The author that's why he says وتخصيص السنة بالكتاب. And he also says وتخصيص السنة بالسنة. Are you there? So the author mentions the first one. What did he say? الكتاب وهو القرآن. The first one is the kitab and it's the Quran. And that's why the author, رحمه الله, says ويجوز تخصيص الكتاب بالكتاب. So you can do تخصيص of the Quran with the Quran. And you could also do the تخصيص of the kitab with the sunnah. He mentions that. The second one is تخصيص. The second one is the sunnah. And the author mentions تخصيص السنة بالكتاب. The sunnah with the kitab. The kitab could do the تخصيص of the sunnah and the sunnah could do تخصيص of the kitab. Both can do it to each other. There is some khilaf regarding whether the sunnah could do, sorry, the kitab can do تخصيص of the sunnah or not. وتخصيص السنة بالسنه and the taqsis of the sunnah with the sunnah itself thus the author mentions that and the third one the author mentions is um he mentions is al qiyasu analogy and he says wa taqsisu an nutq bil qiyasi taqsisu an nutq bil qiyasi and what he means by nutq he mentions it he says wa na'ni min nutq when we say utterance we mean qawla قول الله the statement of Allah وقول الرسول and the statement of the messenger عليه الصلاة والسلام. so here the Sheikh رحمه الله is talking about the المخصصات المنفصلة and they all go back to those three we mentioned which is الشرع والحس والعقل but we're not talking about the other two we're talking about الشرع and within the شريعة it goes back to three which the author mentioned all of the points that he mentioned no it goes back to three simply الكتاب and that's why he says التخصيص الكتاب بالكتاب والتخصيص والتخصيص الكتاب بالسنة right and the second one is السنة and the author mentions التخصيص السنة بالكتاب والتخصيص السنة بالسنة and the third one which is القياس analogy and the author says والتخصيص النطق بالقياس and what he means by النطق أي ده is the statement of the messenger and the utterance of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and the message and the utterance of uh, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala naam sam summarized and elaborated speech mujmal wa mumbay wa mumbay wa summarized speech mujmal stands in need of elaboration Elaboration, bayan, is to remove something from the domain of the problematic into the domain of the evident. Come in. Definite speech, nas, admits of only one meaning. Some say it is speech whose interpretation is it is its revelation. The word nas is derived from minassa or throne of the bride. Apparent speech. Zahir is that which allows one of two meanings, one of which is more apparent than the other. Apparent speech is interpreted by means of evidence and is then called apparent by virtue of evidence. Uh, read it, Karen. The Prophet's action, Af'al. Okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Fasl wal mujmal ma yaftaqiru ila al bayan. والبيان إخراج الشيء من حيز الإشكال إلى حيز إلى حيز التجلي والمب والمبين هو النص والظاهر والعموم فالنص ما لا يحتمل إلى معنى واحدة ما لا يحتمل إلا معنى واحدة وقيل ما تأويله تنزيله وهو مشتق من منصة منصة العروس وهي الكرسي والظاهر محتمل أمرين أحدهما أظهر من الآخر ويؤول الظاهر بالدليل ويسمى ظاهرا بالدليل والعموم قد تقدم شرح شرحه Have you, done, have you read Zahir? Okay. The author, Rahimahullah, he goes into a chapter from the chapters of Usul al Fiqh that's connected to Dalalatul Al Fadh. And it is Mujmal. The author defined Mujmal and he said it is Maftaqara ila al Bayan. It is whatever requires and is in need of clarification. 
So mujmal is maftaqara. It's anything that requires and needs clarification. So the word iftaqara in the Arabic language means a ihtaja, requires and it needs. And it is meaning cannot become clear and apparent. It can't, so it requires to be clarified. The definition that we would prefer is that the author mentions is what we would say that it is the ta'rif uh, al the chosen definition for us would be it's anything that has more than one meaning it has one or two meanings sorry it has sorry it has two meanings or more it has two meanings or more and we can't re- we can't give one meaning over the other meaning any precedence so we can't choose one of those definitions over the other. We can't give any of those meanings uh, superiority over the other. That's the best definition. And as you see, the author says what? The reason why it requires clarification is what? The reason is, if I ask you why does the mujmal require clarification is because there is a ihtimal, possibility that it can take more than one, uh, more than one meaning. So the possibility that it can be any of those meanings, sorry. The possibility that it can be any of those meanings is what's making it need clarification. Um, then the author tried to describe and explain what bayan means. He said, bayan is ikhraj al-shay'i min hayyiz al-ishkali ila hayyiz al And this definition of his is a definition in taqadahu huwa fi kitabi al-burhan. It's a definition he himself has criticized. And as we said at the beginning of the book, the author here, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, we have to kind of give him a lead way in many of his definitions and the statements that he says. It's because he hasn't written this book ala wajhi tahqiq. He's trying to make it easy for the students. There's a, not, a lot of tasamuh that's going to happen from him. A lot of leniency in his usage. But as you go up the ladder, you start to get tightened and told, get rid of this, drop this. You don't need this anymore, and that's what happens. So we have to give it to him, uh, the uh, as they say, the benefit of the doubt. Not to mention the fact that he himself, in his Al Burhan, yeah, in his own book Al Burhan, he explains more things and clarifies it, and actually criticizes and critiques some of his own statements and things that he has previously said. So here he says when he defined it, he says, "Well, bayan ikhraju shay min hayyiz al ishkal ila hayyiz al tajalli." And the, def- and the criticism is more directed at what? When he mentions al-hayyizi, the usage of the word, the domain, hayyiz, right? Because the reason is because the word hayyiz in the Arabic language, it falls under the characteristics which they call it uh, sifat al hisiya Are you with me? Hayyiz means sifat. In, when you, and the people who deal with definitions and make sure that definitions are intact are the ulama al mantiq So they say that the hayyiz, it's actually a from the what? It is sifat hasiya. It's tangible, empirical, uh, what do you call it, uh, characteristics. But bayan, clarification, is not tangible. Bayan, to clarify something, is not. So within your definition is an oxymoron. It's an oxymoron. It's a problematic here. So you're trying to define something with two things that oppose each other. So the best definition is to say, إِنَّ الْبَيَانَ اصْطِلَاحًا هُوَ إِضَاحُ الْمُجْمَلِ The best thing to say is that it, the bayan means the bayan is the clarifier, if that can be said in English. It's the one that clarifies and explains and expands on, okay, and elaborates the meaning of the ambiguous of the of the, of the mujmal. Then the author rahimahullah goes on to defining a nasu. And he goes on saying, Nas means what? The author says the nas is. Anything that can't carry, it can't be possible for it to be given any other meaning except this. So when the scholars, they say, this is a nas, they mean, it is what? Ma'anan wahid. And what are the nusus in the Qur'an? I mean, something that's known as a nas in the Qur'an is known, it is what? It's anything that are adad numbers. When Allah is in the Qur'an, tilka asharatun kamila. Tilka asharatun kamila, Allah says, this is the ten completed. In Hajj, tilka ashara tun kamil. Can somebody come and say ashara kamila ten complete? Say it's ambiguous. What's you know? 
What's actually, what, what does 10 mean? No one can say that. 10 is known, it's a ten, number of 10. So the nas is the number. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Allah is one, is a nas. La yahtamilu ma'anan. La yahtamilu illa ma'anan wahidan. La yahtamilu illa ma'anan wahidan. It only takes this meaning. No other meanings are possible for you to, to attach to this at all. You can't. Okay? That's called nas. So when I say to this ayah as a nas, it means that that's it. It's only one meaning. Then the author mentions that other scholars have given a different definition of the word nas. He says, وَقِيلَ Some said, مَا تَأْوِيلُهُ تَنْزِيلُهُ And that definition is incorrect. That definition which is مَا تَأْوِيلُهُ تَنْزِيلُهُ is incorrect. The best definition is what the author said, مَا لَيَحْتَمِلَ مَعَنًا وَاحِدٍ So the person should try to take that definition. And it is the definition what we think is best. Then the author, rahimahullah, tried to speak about the root and the original root that the word um, nas was taken from. He mentions that he said, وَهُوَ مُشْتَقٌ مِّن مَنَصَّةِ الْعَرُوسِ And the word manassa means what? It means throne, throne, the throne. The throne of the arus, the one, the woman that's getting married, the throne. That's where it, that's where, that's originally where it comes from, he said. Okay, so now look at the word. The word manassat al arusi, the meme would be placed under it a kasra. Some people, due to their lahan, okay, it's incorrect of saying. So, I, sorry, I said uh, the scholars, they, some, scholars, some people say manassa. They place a fatha on it. They say manassa. And it is lahan. The correct way of saying it is minassa. Okay? The correct way of saying it is minassat al arusi, with a kasra on the meme. Placing a fatha on it is a lahan. It's, it's wrong in the Arabic language. Okay? As for the author, rahimullah, when he said mushtaq, you all here thinking to yourself, are you there brothers? That he's taking it back to al-ishtiqaq that is well known al mutaqarr in the ahli lugha, right? How the scholars of the language, when they speak about a word and they take it back to its original form. Huh? But the word minasati. It's not the ishtiqaq of the word nas. Again, it's not min tasahul of the author. Rahimahullah. So the author, rahimahullah, when he said minassatil arusi, here it's known as what? Min jihati talaqi bayn al hurufi. It's the fact that many people, many people know the word minassa. It's very famous. They used to use that word. So what he's trying to say is that it comes from this word. It's the same word, basically. That's what he means. But in reality, when we look at the word mushtaq, we automatically want the root word that the word came out from. But he's telling them according to the word that you guys know and that you guys normally use. You know that word? Yeah, well, this is the, this is the same word, is it? So this is again another tasamuh on the author, especially the fact that this is a science. So if you go into the word mushtaq, there's, there's the scholars of who this is their particular observation. So they look at it at its when it was taken to its original form. Then the author, rahimahullah, then the author, rahimahullah, he mentions after that, al-zahir. And then after that, the author mentions al-zahir. And zahir is, mahtamala amrayni ahaduma adhar min al-akhar. It is anything, the author says, it's anything that has the possibility of taking more than one meaning, but it's stronger and it leans towards one of the two meanings. Are you with me, brothers? Well, ظاهر ظاهر means what? محتمل محتمل أمرين it can take both meanings. Those two, both of these meanings, it can take. لكن أظهر من لكن أحدهما أظهر من الآخر. One of them is more apparent than the other. One of them is more stronger in the meaning. Are you with me, brothers? The uh, the one pay attention. The one that's stronger is called what? The angle, the part that's stronger, the definition that's stronger is called ظاهر. The weak one. The weak meaning that it can take is what is known as ta'wil. That's mu'awwal. <coughs> and the author says, وَيُؤَوَّلُ الظَّاهِرُ بِالدَّلِيلِ Are you with me? Now pay attention. Pay attention. The zahir is, for example, let's say 80% or 70%. And the mu'awwal, which is the ta'wil, is what? That 30 or 20%. That 20 or 30 percent, for it to overcome, for it to out, out, remove 
the 80 or 70 percent that we had with us it, it requires a delil that's what he says the thing that's zahir apparent are you there brothers for it to be dismissed it requires a what and the ta'wil to be taken the mu'awwal to be taken it requires evidence that's what he said The definition that he gave for Zahir is good. We'll stick to that. It's very nice. But what about the definition of Ta'wil? Because he never gave it to us. Ta'wil is Pay attention. It is the wording that was diverted from the Zahir. So the 80%, we diverted it from it. We took it towards the what? 30%. Are you with me, brothers? We took it from the... The 80 or the 70% of the usage of this word and what it meant. And we diverted it towards a what? A 30 or 20%. Are you with me, brothers? That 30 or 20% that we've pushed it towards and that we're using, you did it with a delil that indicated. That's the definition of it. A meaning gave it to you. And then some of the scholars, they say, no, no, no. The zahir is of two types. They don't like using the word ta'wil or mu'awwal or whatnot. They just say the zahir is two types. So, the first one that they say is zahir, which is zahirun binafsihi. Zahirun binafsihi. It is apparent in and within itself. So it's apparent, it's clear in and within itself. And that's the one that we mentioned right now, which is the 80% or the 70% meaning in the word. Well, and that's the one the author defined, which is what? Right? There's two meanings. The part that's larger in meaning, the thing that comes to your mind first when I say a word, if I say lion, straight away the meaning that comes to your head is what? The first meaning that comes to your head is not a courageous man. It's a haywan muftaris, the, uh, the lion, the king of the jungle. That's what comes to your mind. That meaning that that runs to the mind has the largest amount in the meaning but it's not 100% there's another 20 or 30% of it being able to, for it be, to be a courageous individual so if I now want to leave this zahir so are you there? so the, the line here right now is what? that's zahirun binafsihi that 80% you call it zahirun binafsihi that 20%, or that 30%, is a second type of zahir. They call it zahirun bighayrihi. It's apparent as well. It got apparent with the qareena kharijiyya. The evidence itself made it apparent now. Are you with me, brothers? Which is, It became apparent, and the reason why it became apparent is what? This evidence, when it came, what did it look? Pay attention. It was 80 here right now, sah, and now it's what 20. When I said to Saad, Today I met a lion fighting, or I, for example, I met a lion giving a khutbah. For example, this evidence or this word khutbah that I used is a delil, it's an external factor, external agent. That has now given support to the usage of the word, right? Are you with me, brothers? It's given it a very powerful meaning. It now made it the 80% and it made the other meaning that was in the word lying become the, in this particular situation only. In this particular situation. So it's zahir now, it's the 80%. But it's zahir not for, because it made itself zahir. It's zahirun bighayrihi, which is the qareena that helped it. That factor, that agent helped it, so it became apparent in that way. So that's some of the usage of some of the ulama that use it. That's their kind of usage. You see Alai al-Kaykal, <coughs> uh, he does that in his Al-Majmu' al-Muhadhab fi qawaid al-Madhab. Sometimes he uses it like in that, in that particular way. So inshallah ta'ala, I will stop there bi Allah al-Kareem. Al-Af'al is a topic that uh, we've kind of touched on. We'll also do that tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, and then we're going to be doing nasikh and mansukh and whatnot. Um, anything that I said that was wrong or incorrect is from me, shaitan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Uh, Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, 
أستغفرك وأتوب إليه